So I was out having lunch with my dad, and we were down at a Mexican place in Millbrook, which, by the way, it's right there on the interstate, El Cerrito. Just give them a little free plug because it's a really good restaurant. Uh, got really good nachos. I had the uh, chorizo today. Excellent. Really good place to eat. Right up there on the, the exit if you turn right, getting off of I-65. So just a little free plug for them. But Dad and I, we don't always talk politics, but today we just happened to get on that subject. And there was a guy that came up to us afterward, and he had been listening in on our conversation, which is fine. Some people would get upset or consider that rude. I didn't. This was a super nice guy, and uh, he was just enjoying uh, hearing the conversation between the two of us. And, and we were talking about politics, so we talked about gun rights, and we talked about a couple of other big issues, and he could tell that we were conservatives based on the way that we were talking about it. And one of the things that he said, and it was really the first thing that he brought up, because he, he sat and spoke to us, or he stood there and spoke to us in the parking lot, I don't know, maybe about 10, 15 minutes, guy's named Rodney, super nice guy. And he started talking to us, and the first thing he said, the first thing out of his mouth, he said, I don't like the way this country is going, and I remember having family members that fought and bled for this country. And now we've got a bunch of young people that are wanting to vote for socialism and destroy everything that I love about it. And you guys know that I'm not somebody that thinks that Trump hung the moon and everything that he did was right. But as I was riding home, I really started to contemplate that. And I thought about he's in the same position that an awful lot of the people that voted for Trump felt that they were in. They kind of felt like their back was up against a wall. And that they had been just wailed on by the left, culturally, people calling them racist, bigots, homophobes, hate mongers, all these other things. And they were tired of it. They had had enough. And that was not something that was unjustified. All these unsubstantiated things, because he sat and talked, like I said, he stood there and talked to us probably about 10, 15 minutes. And this was not a guy that was a racist or hated people and he wasn't malicious or anything like that he's just saying i was used to the country being a certain way and kids having respect for their parents and families staying together and living together with one another and kids not acting up in class or being disrespectful to other adults or their teachers see that's the thing he heard us talking about politics and what he gathered from that, which I don't think was an incorrect assessment, was the way that we stood on society, which highlights that there is a very different worldview between the left and the right, and that you can usually identify somebody's politics just by listening to what their core values are. If they're pro-family, if they care about respect and authority, and there is a reverence there for religion and for God, nine times out of ten, maybe not every time, but a, a very healthy amount of the time, that is going to be a person on the right. And that is because, as a general rule, your values and what you value in society itself determine what your politics are going to be. And really the message that he was trying to convey is that my family made sacrifices to keep this country free from things like socialism. They were fighting in Vietnam against communism, against socialism, against Marxism. And now there are a whole bunch of people that not only are unwilling to make those kinds of sacrifices, they want to open the doors and let the demons in. They want to make the country a socialist country. They want to take the teachings of Marx and apply them to the United States. And if that was the case, what was the point of my family going through all those sacrifices? What was the point of my family losing blood and lives to keep this country from being swallowed up by socialism? And so this is one thing that I would present to those that are on the left. Even if you hate Donald Trump, think that he's a horrible human being, think that he should never be elected, can you at least see where the guy is coming from? And I'm not talking about Trump, I'm talking about guys like Rodney, 
the millions of Americans that felt that their back was against the wall, that they were losing their country and that they wanted to change everything and essentially make the sacrifices that their family experienced, that their family fought and bled and died for, they want to not just nullify that sacrifice, but basically say that they were in the wrong for fighting against that. They're saying that guys like that, just working class guys that are trying to provide for their family, that they're the monsters. They're the racist. They're the thing that we actually should be fighting against. So yeah, you can understand. I'm not saying that it's justified. I'm just making an observation here. You can understand why that person would look at a guy like Donald Trump, not exactly a pillar of virtue. Nobody should suggest that and say, you know what, this guy is finally fighting back. This guy is finally saying the stuff that I think about. Somebody's finally listening to me, and they understand that this country is in great peril, and they're willing to punch back at these people. They're trying to change the country. Can you at least understand why that guy has a pretty strong feeling about what the left is trying to do to this country? Trying to drag it into socialism? Can you understand why there was that correction, and I would even argue an overcorrection, the reason does boil down to when you're attacking this country, when you're attacking the way that this country does things, and I'm not talking, I'm talking about going back all the way to the fundamental roots, the constitution, the things that our country was founded on. When you're attacking those things, it's like you're attacking the man's family. It's like you're attacking the sacrifices that they made. And so you can understand at least where he's coming from. And by the way, I would ask that people on the right apply the same logic to people on the left. Because as much as I disagree with the left, I mean, I, I literally argue with the left for a living. That's my job. So I'm not somebody that is saying that the left is right or that their conclusions are correct. What I'm saying here is, on the right, we understand that there is something inherently good about America, and yet we make mistakes, and yet we get things wrong occasionally. And yeah, there's some really bad things in our history that we have to atone for and that we have to apologize for, and we can admit that was wrong. We get that. But fundamentally, at its core, America as a whole, there is something intrinsically good about the values espoused in our Constitution that started the revolution in the first place. And that's something the left seems not only unwilling to admit, they try to say the exact opposite. They try to say that America was founded on racism and bigotry, and the whole thing is rotten from the core, and we have to get rid of all of it and embrace socialism. That's what a lot of people on the left are saying. Not all, but a lot. And they're saying we need to cast off all those things that made us great. And there's regular people like the guy that I'm talking about and millions of other Americans that are saying, no, there is something intrinsically good about that. And so if you understand that is the perspective that they're coming from, it makes it a lot harder to hate that person or just dismiss them as, well, they only voted for Trump because they're a racist. They only voted for Trump because they secretly hate black people or hate Mexicans. See, once you, once you understand that and you you meet somebody like that and you understand the reason they did what they did has nothing to do with racism. It has nothing to do with trying to keep women in their place or anything like that. The guy just felt like he was losing his home. He was losing the sacrifices that his family made. And you understand that decision-making process a little bit better. So in reverse, people on the left, they feel like there are a handful of very wealthy people at the top that get special treatment. Now, why do they feel that way? Because it's true. They feel that way because they see CEOs of corporations and big companies have these business practices and get special treatment from the government, like GM, who got a massive auto bailout. Things like that. And they see that and they say that's unfair and that's the reason that they vote the way that they do. A lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Or... They feel as though minorities or women or some group has been marginalized and it's been marginalized largely by the right. And because of that, they say they feel as though there is systematic oppression going on. And that's the reason they vote for the left. 
Now, I think that they're wrong on that, and I'll point out the statistics to back it up. I'm just saying that, t typically speaking, that is where the origin of their political alliance is. They feel like something's been done unfairly, that people are being oppressed, that this is something that has been going on for a long time, that there's a large group of regular working class Americans that through no fault of their own are getting a raw deal. Now, that's not an assessment I agree with, but I understand that for the average rank and file Democrat, we're not talking about elected officials, I'm talking about specifically guys that live out in Wisconsin or Oregon or some of the blue states that are just working class people just trying to take care of their families just like the rest of us, that they feel as though that is what is going on. And so because of that, they voted for the left. Now, I disagree with that assessment. And another thing, too, they blame those circumstances on capitalism because they think what capitalism is, and I know because I've, I've spoken to people on the left and this is their, their idea of what capitalism is. It's an incorrect view. But the point is, you can understand why if they think that's what capitalism is, that's why they think capitalism is bad. They think what capitalism is, is a government that gives handouts to big businesses and gives lots of money to rich people, hoping that that money will kind of trickle down into the lower classes. Now, that's a completely incorrect view of what capitalism is. That would be cronyism. And actually, it would be kind of close to mercantilism. But the point is, it's not capitalism, but that's what they think capitalism is. And part of the reason is because our government has been doing junk like that for a long time now. And so when they hear that America is a capitalist nation and we have a, a free market system, which is largely true still, we have one of the freer markets, I wouldn't even say the freest market, but we have one of the freer markets in the United States. And then they see stuff like that happen to where giant corporations and big banks will get a bailout, but regular Americans don't. You can understand why they feel as though capitalism is broken. Again, that's not capitalism. That's mercantilism or cronyism. But the point is, that's why they think that capitalism ba is bad. And so they try to throw the baby out with the bathwater. The point is, the vast majority of average Americans they just want their families to be provided for and everybody to get a fair shake and to be viewed as equal under the law. That's what they really want, most of them. There are some that want a bunch of handouts and they're wrong for wanting that, even though, again, that motivation is they feel as though people have gotten a raw deal and so it's only fair if we take from the people who have been taking from them for a long time and redistribu redistributing it back. Again, that's a wrong assessment, and I can explain in great detail why it's a wrong assessment. But they feel as though that is what has been happening. And so you kind of understand where they're coming from. The reason this show is called Tactics is because I try to teach you debate tactics. I try to teach you how to have productive conversations with other people about difficult issues. This may be the most important thing that I can tell you, at least from a perspective of how to have a good conversation with someone who disagrees with you on a difficult topic. Try to look at it from their perspective. It's something that's very simple. It's an easy concept to say, but it's very difficult to do. And it takes years of practice to get good at it. But start trying at it now and you'll be pretty good at it on down the road. When you're having a discussion with somebody, if you disagree with them, try to see it from their perspective. Try to understand why they came to that conclusion. Try to understand why they have a, if they have a visceral reaction to something that you say, try to understand why they have such a, a strong reaction to it. And that's going to go a very long way in not helping you necessarily win the debate. But what it is going to go a long way in doing is helping you actually convince the person or at the very least help them respect you. Because if you can argue from the standpoint of seeing it through your opponent's eyes, then you will be able to craft arguments that are far more effective. You'll be able to appeal to their sensibilities and appeal to uh, their policy stances in a way that they will see as productive. And, and it will also instill in them a sense that, okay, even if I disagree with that person, they care enough about me and they care enough about my stances to listen 
and to try to present their arguments, present their point of view in a way that I can understand and that I can kind of get where they're coming from. And I think if everybody did this at least a little bit more, we would have a way better country. Oh, hey, what are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.